Namaste and welcome to Vinyasa Flow Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. For today's practice, you may want to have two blocks and a strap. If you like to have extra cushion for your knees when you're placing your knees on the ground, you might also have a folded blanket. Find any comfortable way to sit. So our last class, which was yesterday, our Tuesday Yen, we focused on opening the heart energy center. And I want to continue more of that. And physically, that includes uh, extension of the shoulders, so broadening the heart space which in turn helps to expand the capacity for the breath in. Here's a little bit more of using layman's terms, explaining about energy and how we can be open to energy flow when we're talking about the chakras. So this book is called The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself, one of my favorites by Michael A. Singer. How many times have you experienced these dynamics in your life? You have a wellspring of beautiful energy inside of you. When you're open, you feel it. When you're closed, you don't. This flow of energy comes from the depth of your being. It's been called by many names. In ancient Chinese medicine, it is called qi. In yoga, it is called shakti. In the West, it is called spirit. Call it anything you want. All the great spiritual traditions talk about your spiritual energy. They just give it different names. That spiritual energy is what you're experiencing when love rushes up into your heart. That is what you're experiencing when you're enthused about something and all this high energy comes up inside of you. You should know about this energy because it's yours. It's your birthright and it's unlimited. You can call upon it anytime you want. It has nothing to do with age. Some 80 year old people have the energy and enthusiasm of a child. They can work long hours for seven days a week. It's just energy. Energy doesn't get old. It doesn't get tired and it doesn't need food. What it needs is openness and receptivity. This energy is equally available to everybody. The sun does not shine differently on different people. If you're good, it shines on you. If you did something bad, it shines on you. It's the same with the inner energy. The only difference is that with the inner energy, you have the ability to close up inside and block it. When you close, the energy stops flowing. When you open, all the energy rushes up inside of you. True spiritual teachings are about this energy and how to open it. So how do we open the energy of the heart, that which is characterized by love, joy, uh, bliss, openness to life? Well, physically, we can open up the region of the heart chakra, but it also has to do with our mind, the thoughts that we entertain, the beliefs that we cultivate, or limiting ones that we shed and how we interact with life. Do we contract or do we use everything as an opportunity to open and expand? So let's begin by opening the body and using some breath work as well to help open up the heart center. And then we'll sit in meditation at the end. So as you're sitting still, begin to check in with your physical body by noticing whatever sensations you're experiencing right now. You might encounter areas of tension or discomfort. Here's an opportunity to open up instead of push away or resist, which in turn closes off energy. So bring a kind attention to all of it. Bring your attention to your breathing just as it is. And in the way that you're breathing, notice what your energy is like now as you're beginning your practice. Bring your attention to your mind. Is it fixated on particular thoughts? Is it focused or scattered, calm, steady? And notice how what you choose to focus on affects your energy. Sense how you feel right now mentally and emotionally. Now, one way to help open up energy flow is to practice gratitude, to take a moment to offer gratitude for anything that you appreciate right now.
and then begin to set an intention for this practice. What would you like to bring energy flow into any area of your life? What do you want to reinforce, invite into your experience? And then allow the breath to deepen, filling up your lungs, especially around your heart center, your belly, and then open the mouth and free flow, exhale. Again, inhale even fuller, gently deeper. And then let any sound out. And this time, let's prepare to chant three ohms. Inhale deeply. Um. Um. Let in a deep breath, slowly expanding your lungs, your belly, closing your lips, slowly let it go. Start to create a gentle whispering sound to your breath by softly narrowing the back of your throat. Take your time to really invite a deep inhalation and to balance the length of the exhalation creating an even balanced flow of energy through the breath. Remembering that the breath itself is a vehicle to circulate life force energy, chi, prana, throughout your body. So keep that going. And let's come on down to, or come to stand at the top of your mat. Separating your feet, hips width apart, parallel to each other. And bringing the hands behind your back to clasp. So now starting with shoulders in extension as you roll the shoulders behind you. If it helps to hold a strap instead of clasping the hands, you can do that. And as you drop the shoulders, breathe in and broaden your heart space, look up. Exhale, bend your knees generously and bow from the hips, dropping your head completely. Soften your neck and let's listen to the breath as you're stretching the arms further and further away from your lower back while lifting your shoulders up away from your neck, bending the elbows slightly, and then relaxing the neck, maybe shaking the head and nodding the head gently. Tilt your weight forward as far as you can balance here so that your hips can stack right above your ankles. Couple more deep cycles of breath here in Uttanasana, a variation of a forward fold. Drop the arms, bend your knees even more. And as you relax the torso and head, breathe in to slowly roll your spine upright as though stacking one vertebra at a time. Join your palms to meet at your heart center and recollect your intention for today's practice. Bring it into how you flow to your breath. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and roll your shoulders back and down, tilting your heart up. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips. Place your fingertips outside your heels and inhale, step your left knee behind you into a kneeling lunge and gaze up. Holding your breath, step into plank pose, top of a push-up. As you exhale, lower your knees, chest, then chin, sticking the tailbone up. Inhale, slither your belly to the ground, root the tops of your feet and coil your chest up, cobra. Exhale, lift your pelvis high and back into downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb and lower your back knee, gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow. Press to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms forward, rise to stand in a gentle back bend. Urdhva 
Then exhale, join your palms together at your heart in Padasana. One more, second side, inhale again, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow from your hips in Uttanasana. Place your fingertips down, inhale, step your right knee back to Anjaneyasana and look up. Holding your breath, step into plank pose. Exhale, Ashtangasana, lower knees, chest, then chin. Inhale, Cobra or Bhujangasana, lower to the floor and coil your chest up. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb and lower your back knee, gaze up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and bow. Rooting down, inhale, rise all the way up, rolling your shoulders back. Exhale, join your hands at your heart. Now we're going to take one round of the next series of Surya Namaskar before we change things up in this vinyasa flow. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead again, coil your chest up. Exhale, bow from your hips. Press your fingertips on your shins, blocks of the floor, and inhale, lengthen your spine parallel to the floor. Ardha Uttanasana. Step back to plank pose and exhale as you lower slowly forward through Chaturanga Dandasana. Then inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Now here's where we're going to change things up. Keep your feet hips width apart to start so that your hips are balanced as you inhale to raise your right leg behind you. Exhaling, bend that knee slowly towards your nose, lifting the belly high as you round into plank. Stepping the foot beside your right thumb, come into a high lunge, then inhale, rise up into crescent pose. Take a moment here as we set this up to turn both of your hips equally to face forward, dropping your tailbone, and slightly lifting your frontal hip bones. As you keep the legs still, take another breath in and lengthen your spine taller while relaxing the shoulders. Keep the legs still and exhale, twist to the right, keeping your spine vertically upright and open your arms wide apart like a T. So your right arm is taking the shoulder into extension. Let's pause here and just feel the alignment of this twist. Keeping your pelvic bowl upright, lengthen up through the back of your skull. If your balance feels pretty stable, you can look behind your right shoulder. Now start to backstroke your left arm, taking that shoulder in extension as you enter warrior two. Drop the left heel, align right heel to arch of left foot, and open the arms wide, gazing past your right fingertips. Here, bend your right knee just on top of the ankle and rotate the outer hip under you. Firm the top of your left thigh bone back and root down to your outer left foot. Keeping your shoulders stacked right above your hips, steady your gaze, just beyond your right hand. Breathe into this posture, circulating prana or chi throughout your body. Keep the bend of your right knee and rotate your right palm to face up. Peaceful warrior for just one inhale, raising the right arm overhead as you keep the front knee bending forward. This is a side bend. Then coming upright, lower your hands into plank pose and continue to flow into your vinyasa, exhaling through chaturanga. Inhaling into Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Second side. Keeping your hips balanced and high. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Rounding forward as you contract your abdomen. Exhale, knee to nose. Step the foot lightly beside your left thumb. Stay high on the ball of your back foot. And inhale, rise into crescent lunge. Take a moment to set this up again, squaring both hips evenly to face the front. Pelvic bowl upright as you drop your tailbone and slightly lift your frontal hip bones. As you breathe in, lengthen your spine, 
Keep your legs still and exhale, rotate the left arm to face the back wall, creating extension in that shoulder. Open the arms like a T as you twist, keeping your spine upright. Invite the full length of your spine, vertical, maybe looking over your left shoulder. Deep breath in and take your right shoulder in extension by back stroking your right arm as you enter warrior two. Spin your right heel down, align your left heel to the arch of your right foot and gaze past your left hand. Rotate your left outer hip under and firm the top of your right thigh bone back. Filling up with breath and gently letting it go. Peaceful warrior. Rotate the left palm to face up and lift your spine as you side bend towards your rear wall. Deep inhalation to open up your left side body. With an exhale, lower your hands to the ground and plank. Continue down into your vinyasa. Breathe into cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing duck. Now let's pause for three deep breaths, steadying your gaze and observing the sensations in your body. Bring the breath to areas of tension or stagnancy where you could open up energy to flow. All right, so we're gonna take the sequence two more rounds on each side, starting from here. Slow your breath down and listen to it to pace your body. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose. Step the foot beside right thumb, entering a high lunge. Inhale, rise up to crescent pose. Keep your legs still and exhale, twist to the right, arms like a T. Back stroke the left arm, inhale to warrior two, facing the left wall. Keep the right arm up, exhale to peaceful warrior, side bending towards the rear wall. Inhale, place your hands on the ground, entering plank pose. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. Second side, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee high towards your nose and plank, stepping the foot beside your left thumb in a high lunge. Inhale, rise up to crescent pose. Back stroke the left arm and exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, back stroke the right arm, entering warrior two to the right. Exhale, side bend towards your rear wall, peaceful warrior. Inhale, place your hands, stepping into plank. Continue to lower into your vinyasa. At downward dog, pause and re-regulate your energy flow through the breath. Three cycles of breath. Steadying your mind as well. Remembering how your mind affects your energy. Let's take the sequence through one last cycle. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, round through plank, stepping the foot to a high lunge. Inhale, rise up to crescent pose. Exhale, tee the arms and twist to the right. Inhale, back stroke the left arm and turn to the left in warrior two. Exhale, side bend towards the rear wall in peaceful warrior. Inhale, place your hands in plank pose. Exhale to lower, finish your vinyasa.
downward facing dog. Last side. Inhale, raise your left leg back. Exhale, round into plank, stepping the foot to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. Exhale, twist to the left, back stroking your left arm. Inhale, back stroke the right arm, entering warrior two. Exhale, side bend towards your rear wall, peaceful warrior. Inhale, place your hands in the earth and continue down into your vinyasa. Once again, be still for three breaths, re-regulating your mind, your breath, and your body, thus your energy. On your next in-breath, sweep your right leg behind you. Then exhale, step the foot beside your right thumb, entering warrior one. Spin your back heel down and rise up, squaring your hips to face forward. Dropping your tailbone and slightly lifting your frontal hip bones. Now feel your left outer heel really root that firmly into the ground. As you spiral your inner left thigh towards your rear wall. Feels like two opposite actions. It is. Use that to create balance. Back stroking your arms, interlace your fingers behind your back and roll your shoulders down as you breathe in, look up. Preparing for humble warrior, exhale, start to bow forward. Whether resting on your front thigh or dropping the head beside your ankle, continue to square both hips to evenly face forward. Here, stretch your arms away from your lower back like it in our first forward fold. Lift the shoulders away from your neck and let your head go. Root down to your feet and inhale, rise up. Align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot and grab your strap in your left hand. Let's prepare for bound side angle pose. Wrap the long end of the strap behind your back, dangling it on the outside of your right thigh. Set up your legs like warrior two. Bring your right arm to the left side of your front thigh and find the other end of the strap. Now straighten your arms and walk your hands as close to, the, to each other as you can while gliding your hips sideways towards your back wall and stretching your torso towards your front wall. Pressing your right arm and your inner right leg against each other, keep the right leg solidly still. Rotate the outer hip under. Spin your chest towards the sky. If your hands meet, you might clasp them or hold your left wrist. Now land your gaze where it feels okay on your neck and let's breathe here in Baddha Parjvakanasana. We have a couple of options to step into a standing balancing pose. Either unbind and prepare for half moon, placing the right hand upper right corner of your right foot, dragging the left foot in, or keep the bind, prepare for bird of paradise. To enter bird of paradise, step the left foot beside your right foot at the top of your mat and shift your weight onto your left foot as you flex the right foot and rise up. Once your spine is completely upright, then consider straightening the right leg too, maybe gazing over your left shoulder. So whether you're now in half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana, with an option to catch your lifted foot in sideways standing bow, or you're in bird of paradise, let's tune into a few more breaths, steadying your eyes, cultivating stillness in your body. If you're in bird of paradise, step the right foot down, keep the bind if you can, 
and step the left foot back to bound side angle. Otherwise, step back from half moon pose and let's all meet in warrior two. Warrior two, inhale fully. Exhale your hands to the floor. Optional to add a vinyasa here. Cat cow or none at all. We'll meet in downward facing duck. Slow inhalation, expanding that breath into all crevices of your body. Deep exhalation, undoing any unnecessary tension. Couple more breaths. In moments of challenge, it's tempting to contract. We want to defend ourselves and feel protected. That's human. But how do you stay open? How do you discern when you actually don't need to contract? Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, round forward and step the foot beside your left thumb. Drop your back heel, face forward. Inhale, rise up to Virabhadrasana one. To find that neutral upright pelvic bowl, press down firmly through your outer right heel while spinning your inner right thigh towards your back wall. Then back, shook your arms and switch the interlacing of your thumb and index fingers on top. Draw the shoulders back as you breathe in. Take your time bowing forward, entering humble warrior. Dropping your head, relaxing your neck, stretch the arms forward, broadening your heart space. Breathe into it. How do we discern when it's not necessary to contract? One more deep breath. As you start to rise up, find your strap, take it with you, and then set up in warrior two, align heel to arch. Holding the strap in your right hand, wrap the long tail behind your back so it dangles just to the left of your left thigh. Roll your left outer hip under and slide your pelvis sideways towards the back of the room. Bring your left arm on the inner side of your left thigh and catch the other end of the strap. As you keep your arms straight, Sweep your hips towards the rear of your mat and lengthen your torso towards the front, spinning your chest open towards the sky, perhaps clasping your hands or holding your right wrist, and land your gaze with intention and be here in all the sensations you're experiencing here. A few more breaths, bound side angle pose. Bada Parjvakanasana. Remember what you trans transitioned to on the first side, whether entering half moon or bird of paradise. Half moon, place the hand, left hand, upper left corner of the left foot and start to shift into it. Bird of paradise, walk the right foot next to the left and shift your weight onto your right foot as you rise. In Bird of Paradise, make sure, make sure your spine is upright before you consider straightening the left leg. And maybe look over the right shoulder. If you're in half moon, you might take the sideways standing bow 
catching the top of your lifted foot. The last breaths where you are. And then start to transition to warrior two. Stepping the right foot down. Deep breath in. Stay in a wide stance and parallel your feet to face the wide width of your mat. Let's bring the hands to the hips as we prepare for a wide-legged forward fold here. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, fold. Place your fingertips on blocks or the ground and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Let's prepare for a spinal twist. Keep your two hips leveled. Place one hand on the ground or block front and center under your chest and raise the opposite arm as you spin your chest to face that wall. Sending both of your shoulder blades down your back ribs, lengthen the crown of your head forward. Breathe wide across your arms. One more deep breath. Then switch hands. Lengthen the spine forward as you inhale and twist at your waistline as you exhale, keeping your hips balanced in height to protect your lower back. One more deep breath here. And then exhale to fold in. Choose to clasp your big toes and pull yourself in further. If you practice headstand, here's an opportunity to enter tripod headstand on your own. As long as you're free of any neck issues. If you're in a headstand, gently come back to your wide-legged forward fold, and let's all come up halfway, lengthening the spine parallel to the floor. Pivot to face the front of your mat, and enter a kneeling lunge, setting the right knee down. So here, let's open up the right hip flexor just a little bit more. Either press your hands on the top of your left thigh, lifting your spine as you sink the hips lower, making sure you're not resting the belly on your front thigh, but you're lifting the frontal hip bones, scissoring the left hip back. Or tilt your torso forward and bend the right knee, leaning your weight on your right thigh, and backstroke the right arm, catching the inner side of the foot, and then press into your left thigh with your left arm. You could also take that so-called mermaid version where you hook the crook of your right elbow with the top of your right foot and raise the left arm overhead, clasping your fingers. A few more breaths here. And then gently set your hands down, step the left knee back, and switch legs. Bring the right foot forward. Come into your kneeling lunge. Either press your hands on the top of your right thigh, sinking your hips, lifting your frontal hip bones as you scissor the right hip back. Or bend the left knee. Tilt your weight forward and back stroke the left arm to catch the inner foot or ankle. And maybe you press the right hand into the right thigh. Maybe you hook the top of the left foot into the crook of the left elbow and clasp the hands overhead. A couple more deep breaths. And 
much lower onto plank pose, top of a push up. From plank, allow a few breaths to slowly lower through Chaturanga and all the way to your belly. Resting your forehead on the floor, let's prepare for our last few active back bends with shoulders and extension in bow pose, Danyarasana. So slide your knees as close together as you can. Press your pubic bone into the floor as you bend the knees and reach back to catch your inner or outer feet. Kicking your feet equally away from your hands, pull your feet towards you and lift the knees no wider apart than hips distance. Feel the fronts of the shoulders back. Look slightly down to lengthen the back of your neck. And then count five to seven breaths before letting go to rest. Once you've let it go, be still for three breaths. Notice the energy of your body. Round two of three. Same posture, bow. Slide your knees close together. Boot your pubic bone into the floor. Reach back for your inner or outer feet. Take it for five to seven breaths, your count. rest for three breaths. Last round, Danyarasana on your own. When you're done resting, press yourself up to sit and please bring your legs in front of you. Let's set up for a seated twist. Extending your left leg forward, step your right foot either in front of your right hip or outside of your left knee, in which you might bend the left knee too. With the right hand behind your pelvis, raise your left arm and press down into the ground to lengthen your spine upwards as you breathe in. Exhale at your waistline, twist to the right and lower your left arm to hold the top leg or to hook your elbow outside of it. Breathing in, keep lengthening your spine. Breathing out, keep twisting. As you exhale, unwind your spine and hug your thighs close together, entering cow face pose, Gomukhasana. You could keep the bottom leg straight or bend both knees. Make sure your two sitting bones are evenly rooted. Raise your left arm, maybe dangling a strap behind you. And bend the elbow behind your head, rolling the tricep forward. Reach the right hand underneath behind you, catch the other end of the strap, and walk your hands as close together as you can maybe clasping them. Press your shoulders down and inhale, tilt your chest up. Then exhale, reach your chest forward, starting to bow, breath by breath, in Gomukhasana. On your next inhale, root down through your hips, and slowly rise. Release the arms and legs. And let's set up for the same version of the twist on the first side. 
the right leg forward, left foot in front of your left hip or crossed outside of your right knee. Maybe bend your right knee too. Place the left hand behind your pelvis. And as you raise your right arm, root down and inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, twist to your left, lower your right arm. Maybe hooking the elbow and continue to explore with each breath. As you exhale, unwind your spine and hug your thighs closer together for cow face pose. Option to straighten the bottom leg. Raise your right arm, maybe hold a strap to dangle from it. Bend the elbow behind your head and reach the left hand underneath to catch the other end of the strap. Walk your hands as close together as you can. Maybe they clasp and press your shoulders down as you inhale, tilt your chest up. Exhale, reach your chest forward, taking your time to fold, breath by breath. Pressing through your hips, inhale to slowly rise up. And then release your arms. Straighten your legs in front of you for one more posture before rest. Paschimottanasana. Separate your feet hips distance and flex them. Ground your sitting bones and inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, extend your heart forward little by little. Whether holding a strap around the balls of your feet or clasping your big toes. Pressing down to your hips, you have to slowly rise. And please make your way onto your back, entering corpse pose. We'll be here for a few minutes, closing your eyes, relaxing your breathing, cultivating stillness with loving awareness. Shavasana.
as you continue to rest in stillness, keeping your eyes closed, begin to scan your physical body and notice how it feels now. Beginning with small parts of your body, gently start to move and wake up. Graduate into larger parts of your body with an easy stretch. Then slowly roll over onto your right side and rest your head, pausing to observe your breathing, keeping it natural. Notice how energy is flowing now through the breath. How do you feel energetically? Then take your time pressing the ground and lifting your body up. Find a comfortable seated position in which your spine can be tall. You can feel open in the heart space while relaxed. One mudra to cultivate the energy of the heart is Lotus Mudra. And it's done by bringing the heels of your palms together, inner thumbs, inner pinky edges together, and the fingers open up, palms face up like a blossoming lotus as you rest your thumb tips at your sternum. So here's a visualization meditation to welcome energy flow through your heart center. Close your eyes or steady a soft gaze on one spot. Begin to inhale very slowly and deeply into your heart center, surrounding your heart organ, all of your lungs, back, front, and then through your lips, very slowly empty the breath, gently. One more time, inhale into the heart cave, filling up even the backs of your lungs. Pause at the very top of that in-breath before slowly letting it go once again through the lips, but gently. Let's try that one more time, inhaling slowly through the nose, imagining the breath filling up your heart center region. Pause the breath in, relax the body. Then gently and slowly let it go through the lips. From here, continue to breathe naturally again. And as you breathe in, imagine a warm green light sparked at the region of your heart chakra. And as you breathe out, that glowing light expands from your heart center into the spaces surrounding it, into your belly, up to your throat, inhaling, feel the nurturing feeling of that warm light, a sense of loving kindness being held for you. And as you exhale, see that effervescent green spread to larger areas of your body. Continue this as you breathe naturally. Letting the green, nurturing light continue to spread wider and wider throughout your physical body.
bringing with it a feeling of healing, vitality, kindness, joy, love. Sense any areas in your body that might feel congested, stagnant, or tense, in which you can welcome that warm light. Releasing unnecessary contraction. Shedding layers of tension that you're ready to shed. Notice now how your mind feels, how your heart feels. Here is yet another tool to increase your energy, to expand your energy of your heart. What's one thing you can offer gratitude for at this moment? Feeling that, bring back your intention for this practice. Name it out loud or in your mind. And then remember to whom or what you dedicated today's practice. Sense them receiving the energy of this warm, nurturing light coming from your heart center too. And together, let's close the practice chanting three ohms. Inhale deeply. your heart center. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.